Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made With Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you how to create a basic circle in 3D space with the Array Ops and the Mesh Instance Op. So first of all, I'd just like you to pause the video and make what you see here. And please pay attention that your scale up here is set to 0 0.5. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to make a continuous number array op, and its values are 100. I'm going to pull out a value op, and I'm going to use this to define the array length. So I'm just going to go here and type this in. Okay, now I'm going to normalize the array. So I grab array divide. I'm going to divide the contents of this array with the length of the array. So I'm going to put that in here. And as you can see, we now get these nice normalized numbers going from 0 to 1. OK. So now I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to grab an array pack 3. So I just want to make an x, y, z array out of this. And I can just do that by grabbing the same array and putting it into x, y, and z components. This expects a trigger. So I'm going to put it there, and now I'm going to put the resulting array into positions. Now, this circle, uh, this sphere looks a little bit big, so I'm going to put this on 0 0.05. I'm going to go back to trigger once and reset. Now, this looks more like it. So we need a sine and a cosine to make a basic circle. I'm not going to make this a video about trigonometry. There's plenty of resources for that. So let's grab the array sin up. And this is going to be the X component. And as you can see, this is on sin. I'm going to copy this. I'm now going to put this on the Y component. I'm going to label this Y. I'm going to put this on cosine. And I'm going to copy this again. And let's just make a bit of space. I'm going to put this on the Z component. And for now, I'm just going to turn this amplitude to zero. And I'll leave on cosine. I'm just going to label this Z. So we have something here on the screen, but not a lot. So we need a magic number here, which is P. So I'm going to grab the P up. And if we now plug that into the frequency inlet, as you can see, we get half of a circle. So to get a full circle, we need to multiply this by 2. So I'm going to grab the multiply up. It's already on 2. And I'm just going to get these connect them there, and I'm going to plug P into here. And we've now, in under a minute or two, got a basic circle on the screen. So if I go here to the array length, and I put it on 10, or 20, or 50, because we normalized it, it's always going to fit perfectly. So now we've got a basic circle. So far, so good. So what we want to do now is we want to make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to move all this up here. So we want to add like a little bit of uh, motion to this. So first of all, I want to make this just a bit more interesting than a basic circle. So I'm going to drag this out from here. I'm going to make a multiply up. And then let's just move it over here so it's easier to see. I'm going to grab the seal up. This turns like a floating point value into a whole number, easiest way to say it. And then I'm going to grab a value up. And as you can see, if I move this to a value like 3.64, it becomes 4, becomes a whole number. So, wow, we see some stuff going on here, which is looking kind of cool, but it's not exactly matching up if we look at it. So, first of all, let's put this amplitude on 1. And as you can see, it's now become kind of 3D. So, what we need to do is we just need to multiply this number by P, right? So, if I'm going to get the output from this, and I'll plug it into there. And let's now disconnect it from here. And if I now change this, and we just need to get more points. So let's put this in like 400. All right. So as you can see here, by changing this, we're changing the amount of waveforms, right? So if I put this on 1, we get a perfect circle. If I put it on 2, we get this. And so on. So this is already looking pretty cool. So I'm going to just grab the amplitude of array sin y, and I'm just going to lower it so it's just a little bit easier to see. So how do we animate this? Well, we have the phase here. But as you can see, something weird happens. Look, this isn't what we want. We want it to just turn around. So there's kind of two ways to do this. So I'll show you the first way. 
Let's grab the phase, just pull it all the way over here so it's easy to see, and we grab the timer two up, okay? And we're now gonna plug this into the phase for the Y component and for the Z component. And as you can now see, everything is rotating perfectly. So let's just make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. All right, slow down the timer a touch, put it on 0 0.25. There we go. Now we can put this on 100 points. Might make it a little bit easier to see what's happening. So this is like the very basic um, way of making a circle and then using P and really basic trigonometry to add waveforms to the arrays. And as you can see, they always perfectly connect. That has to do with P and us normalizing the array. So we can go a little bit further now and just make this a touch more interesting. Um, so let's just take a look here at what we can do. So we want to just like modulate this uh, with like another copy of itself, basically. So I'm going to grab the array sin um, output from here. I'm going to plug this into um, array um, sin. And I'm going to put this then on sin. And we're now going to go down here and we're going to grab an array math op. And we're going to put this on multiply. And we're now going to grab um, this. So this was the cosine from y. This is the sin. And we're doing multiply. So what happens if we then go over here and we grab an array and split? And don't worry, this can be a bit tricky to follow, but it's just to show you how you can experiment. I'm going to just give it the trigger. And I'm going to get the original y component, and I'm going to plug it in here. I'm going to disconnect it. And this interpolated array, and I'm going to plug into array two. And if you look at what's going on here, this is the original array, just this part that we built before. And if we now put it over here, as you can see, this here is modulating the sin again. So if we use the phase, we can start to get some really cool, interesting stuff. So let's just grab a timer two and just put that on there and slow it down a bit, put it on like 0 0.66. Now, as you've noticed, we're not using P right now, right? So if we just grab P and plug it into frequency, what do we get? Wow, this looks really kind of cool. So let's lower the amplitude to, say, 0 0.5. And as you can see, we've got some really interesting modulation happening now with the shape. So this can seem a little bit complicated at first, but if you're building it from the ground up, then it's really not so difficult to get your head around. And I just wanted to show you how with a few operators you could create really interesting harmonic motion. So let's use this to just put it back to the way it was before. The last op I want to show you before we close this um, tutorial off is a really handy one, and it's called Array Free X Transform. This is like really one of your best friends here. Uh, transform is translate, rotate, and scale positions in an array of free. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to put it here. Everything stopped because we need a trigger. So I'm going to put that there. And let me just turn the timer off here, so it's standing still. Now, if you look here, we can now rotate this on X, Y, and Z. And you might think, why would we be using this and not a standard transform up? Because this allows you to keep the flow of array data, basically. And there's going to be times when you're going to find this really handy to do. So this was the basics of this tutorial with how to make a circle, how to make it a little bit, little bit more interesting and modulate it with different waveforms. And so I hope this tutorial has been educational and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for your time. Bye.